We continue with our next speaker, Pedro Benedini Riu from the University of San Carlos, ICNC San Carlos, uh, about the geometry of Corrang 1 surfaces in R4. Thank you. Do I need to use the, the microphone? Because I really hate it. No? So that's okay. <laughs> uh, well, good morning. My name is Pedro. I'm a PhD student at ICMC under the supervision of Professor Sejinha and also Howell Set Singha from Valencia. And thank you very much for this opportunity. It's a one of a kind opportunity. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I will talk about the geometry of Corong one surfaces in R4. And to do such a study, we need to look at the rich literature concerning not only surfaces, regular surfaces in R4 and R5, but also singular surfaces in R3. And here, uh, I put some authors that have prov provided us uh, the background, and I hope I didn't forget anyone that it's in here. And, well, I'll split my talk in two parts. In the first one, I'll talk about the second order geometry of any Corong 1 surface in R4. And, as Raul promised on Monday, the second part will be dedica dedicated to the flat geometry of the singularity I1. This is the, the importance of the singularity is that this is the first one that appears in the classification of Klotz, Pop, and Rieger of 2007. Well, uh, first, uh, to study the second order geometry of such surface surfaces, we need this construction. Uh, we'll consider M tilde a smooth surface, G a smooth map with Q a coron one point of G, and M will be taken as the image of M tilde under G, and G of Q will be P. We can take a local coordinate system Fi of M tilde and F uh, defined by this composition will be a local parameterization of our surface M at P. Well, uh, the tangent line of the surface M at P will be the image of the differential map G uh, at Q and the normal hyperplane of M at P will be the some space satisfying this condition. And it's important to notice that uh, the dimension of NPM is three. Well, the first fundamental form is defined in a canonical way. Uh, it's important to, to say that we need, needed that construction before because all the second order geometry will be taken in this space. So that's why we need the previous construction. And the first fundamental form is defined in a very canonical way, and it induces a Riemannian pseudometric, not a metric, on the tangent space of M tilde at Q. Uh, well, the second fundamental form is defined in the basis of TQ M tilde, and we can later uh, extend it in a unique bilinear way to the whole space. And it's also important to say that the definition of the second fundamental form uh, does not depend on the choice of local coordinates on the surface M tilde. So it does not depend on the choice of the, the, the phi, the application phi. Also, for every normal vector on, in NPM, we can define the second fundamental form along this direction, as we see uh, here. And if we take an orthonormal frame uh, of NPM, we can write the second fundamental form as a sum of the second fundamental form along each direction of the frame. And furthermore, uh, if taking this orthonormal frame, we can represent the second fundamental form as this matrix. That means the matrix of the, the coefficients. Well, now I'm able to define the curvature parabola. Uh, this definition was first made 
by Martins and Ballesteros in 2015. And the curvature parabola delta p is the image of this, the, the map eta q defined by the restriction of the second fundamental form to the subset of unitangent vectors cq. So the curvature parabola is a plane curve that can be parametrized in this way by eta using an orthonormal frame. And, it, and I must say that the curvature parabola may degenerate into a half line, a line, or even a point. Uh, in 2016, Mendes and Nuno Ballesteros, they showed that there are four A2 orbits in the space of two jets of co-rank one maps from R2 to R4, as we see. And the interesting thing is that the curvature parabola is a complete invariant for their classification in the sense that the curvature parabola can distinguish uh, the four orbits as we see. So here we have a parabola. In this case, uh, we have this normal form. If delta p is a non-degenerate parabola, this normal form, uh, if we have a half line, a line, or a point. Oh, this is big. <laughs> uh, we show that just using a smooth change of coordinates in the source and isometries in the target, we can write any Corong one uh, map from R2 to R4 uh, in, a in the, one of the following ways, uh, depending on only on its two, uh, A2 normal form. It's a little big. I'll let you get, over, get, get, get all over it. Okay. Well, this, is, this theorem is very interesting and it uh, attests that the curvature parabola contains all the second order information of a surface in the sense that two surfaces uh, have their two jets, jets equivalent under the action of R2 times O4 if and only if there is a linear isometry that maps one curvature parabola to another. And inspired by the, uh, the, the study of regular surfaces in R5, uh, here I define the affine curvature plane and the curvature plane itself. The affine curvature plane is the plane that contains the curvature parabola delta p when it does not degenerate, the plane that contains the image of the second fundamental form when delta p is a line or a half line, and the plane parallel to the plane yz through delta p, of course, when the delta p is a point. And we define the curvature plane EP as the plane parallel to the affine plane, but passing through p, that it's the orange of our system. Oh, the curvature parabola, yes, of course. The curvature parabola is the image of the second fundamental form when we restrict it to the, only to the unit tangent vectors. So we have the second, the second fundamental form applied to x, x, when x is a unit tangent vector of the TKM, the, the, the tangent the space Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, so we have the affine uh, curvature plane and the curvature plane itself. Here we have an illustration of the previous definition. We have the curvature parabola, the affine curvature plane, and the curvature plane itself. Well, now I can define the, con the, the, the concepts of asymptotic and essential binormal directions. Uh, a vector, an, a non-zero tangent vector x is an asymptotic direction if there is a non-zero vector in EP on the curvature plane satisfying this condition. In such case, we say that this vector is an essential binormal direction. But we may have also non-zero vectors in NPM, vectors that do not belong in P, but also satisfy the previous condition. And we call these vectors binormal directions, just binormal directions. 
Uh, in order to proceed with the following uh, results, we shall decompose the, norm the normal hyperplane in a very helpful way. Uh, we shall write it as the direct sum of EP and EP orthogonal. And we'll consider an, or an orthonormal frame satisfying this condition. And as we already know, we, we will be able to write the matrix of the coefficients of the second fundamental form using this uh, frame. Uh, this lemma gives us a criteria to identify asymptotic directions in the sense that a non-zero vector x will be an asymptotic direction if and only if this condition holds. It's important to notice that we only use the curvature plane, the, the, its, its orthogonal complement, it didn't uh, make any difference. Well, we know that uh, when we have the parameterization of delta p, the curvature parabola, uh, the, the eta parameterization as I defined earlier, we know that every parameter y corresponds to a unit tangential sorry, to a unit tangent, tangent, crap, tangent direction x uh, in CQ, the, the, the set of, the subset of uh, unit. Uh, I must say that this, this concept of measure is based on our definition of the pseudometric induced by the first fundamental form. And we will define the new tangent direction uh, x equals to 0, 1, it's defined as the corresponding to the parameter, parameter y infinity in the following way. If the curvature parabola is a line or a half line, uh, eta of y infinity is equal to eta prime of y infinity uh, and they are equal to this vector. Uh, it's important to, to see that they are equal, it will be important later. If delta p is a point, v, of course, eta of y infinity must be v, and its derivative must be zero, since it's a point. And if delta p is a non-degenerate parabola, uh, these vectors, they are not defined. Well, using this lemma, uh, it, it tells us that a, ta a tangent direction given by a parameter y is asymptotic if and only if those two vectors, they are collinear, where pi is the, ortho, the canonical orthogonal projection uh, into the, the, the curvature plane. And by abuse, we say that this paramet parameter y uh, corresponding to an asymptotic direction is also called an asymptotic direction. And now, uh, having the previous this lemma, in mind, we are able to count the number of asymptotic directions for each possible possibility of delta p. Uh, when delta p is a non-degenerate parabola, we may have two, one, or zero asymptotic directions, depending on the position of p. Uh, dep depending on the position of p, when p lies outside the curvature parabola, we have two asymptotic directions. When p is on the, the parabola, we have just one. And when p lies inside the curvature parabola, we have non-asymptotic directions. When delta p is a half line, we have two asymptotic directions if delta p is not radial. And if it is, all directions will be asymptotic. When delta p is a line, uh, we have one asymptotic direction if delta p is not radial, and if it is, again, all directions will be asymptotic. And at last, when delta p is a point, uh, once again, this is the more degenerate case, all directions will be asymptotic. Well, as I also promised, I'll talk a, a little bit about the umbilic curvature. And in order to do so, I need to consider a very special orthonormal frame of NPM. 
we will consider a frame that uh, if delta p is a non-degenerate parabola, the second fundamental form will be written in this way. But we already know that it's possible. But when delta p is a degenerate parabola, the second fundamental form will not uh, depend on E3. Besides, if x here, it's important to see that I'm taking any tangent direction, it's not a unit tangent direction. Besides, when x is a unit tangent direction, uh, the last component of each uh, equation tells uh, tell us only about the position of the curvature parabola in the space. In the sense that uh, the second fundamental form restricted to the unit tangent vectors uh, will not depend on the, third, on the third component up to sino. So, with this in mind, we can define the, the umbilic curvature, as we see. And geometrically, the, umbi the um umbilic curvature measures the distance between the affine curvature plane and the curvature plane itself, when delta p is a non-degenerate parabola, the distance between the line that, con that contains delta p and p, when delta p is a line or a half line, and the distance between delta p and p itself, when delta p is a point. Uh, this definition was a uh, generalization of the definition given by Martins and Nuno Balesteros in their paper, but also we use the definition of umbilic curvature for regular surfaces in R5, given by Carmi. Well, uh, a powerful tool to study uh, ge the geometry of a surface is to study its, its contact with some other model objects. Uh, in our case, we'll study the contact between our surface M at P with hyperplanes. And such contact is measured by the singularities of the high function. Here we have uh, the high function HV, where V belongs to the unit sphere and F is a local parameterization of M at P. And the study of the high function gives us this theorem. We, know that, we will know that the high function will be singular at the point P if and only if the vector V belongs to the normal, uh, the nor the normal hyperplane. Uh, furthermore, if delta P is not a point, the high function will have a degenerate singularity at P if and only if the vector V is a binormal direction. And when, de when delta P is a non-degenerate parabola, the high function has a singularity of type sigma 2,2 two if and only if the vector V is orthogonal to EP or the umbilic curvature is zero. Also, when delta P is a line or a half line, the singularity is of type sigma 2,2 two if and only if this condition holds. And at last, when delta P is a point, the singularity of HV is degenerate for all normal vectors and is of type sigma 2,2 two if and only if this condition holds. <coughs> so we, we obtain conditions on V and also using uh, the umbilic curvature. Uh, a hyperplane through P, an orthogonal to an essential binormal direction is called an oscillating hyperplane. And having in mind the previous result and this definition, we have this consequence. Uh, if delta P is not a point, a hyperplane has a degenerate contact with M at P if and only if this hyperplane is orthogonal to a binormal direction V. Moreover, if V is an essential binormal, the, hyper, the hyperplane will be the oscillating one. And, well, uh, yeah, that's all. Now I'll start the second part of my talk. Uh, and in this part, I'll, stu I'll study the flat geometry of this singularity, uh, A1, given by this A model. And now uh, I'll do it in two different ways, uh, uh, as Raul also promised and also did. 
Well, uh, the first approach is to study, uh, to, to give a cl uh, Rx classification of germs of submersions from R4 to R, where X is and where X is our model surface given by F. And then, using these normal forms, we will study uh, for each orbit the high function related, and then we will study the flat geometry of this, uh, this surface. First, uh, let me remind you that Rx is a subgroup, a geometric subgroup in the sense of daemon, of diffeomorphisms that preserve our variety, our model variety X. Well, uh, in order to obtain such classification, we need the E4 module of vector fields tangent to X, uh, denoted by theta X and also called the log. And we will obtain these vector fields, we will integrate them, and then to, to obtain the diffeomorphisms in our X, and using the, the complete transversal met method for the subgroup Rx, we will obtain uh, the classification. Uh, in our case, I, oh, oops, sorry, uh, I is the, the ideal of polynomials defining X, and it's important to see that we have four of them, four equations. Uh, so, it's a little hard to, to calculate this, uh, this module of vector fields. And a vector field will belong to, to the Derlog if and only if this condition holds. It, I said it's difficult because in, in, in our case it's not a complete intersection, so it's, it's harder to, to calculate it. But we were able to do it using the software Singular. In using it, uh, we got uh, the, the module, the, the Derlog. And it's important to see that only the seven first seven ones, sorry, only the first seven ones have a non-zero linear part. So we, we obtained 13 uh, vector fields in this module. And here, now we have the Rx classification of submersions of, from R4 to R. Uh, which have co-dimension less or equal to 3. Well, now in, in here, of course, we have the, the, the orbits. For our model surface X, we know that, the, that the tangent space is given by this vector. The tangent con is the plane XZ and the curvature plane is the plane YZ. So as I said, for each orbit G that we got from the last theorem, we will study the fiber G equals to zero and the high function given by this composition where F is our uh, singularity from the list, the I1 singularity. So let's do it. The first fiber is transverse to both tangent, the tangent line and the tangent con and it contains the curvature and plane. And in this case, the high function is regular. The second fiber is transverse to the tangent con and to the curvature plane. And the high function has singularity of type AK minus one. The third fiber contains the, con the tangent con and it's transverse to the curvature plane. And in this case, the high function is, has singularity of type A1, AKA Morse. And the last fiber contains both the tangent con and the curvature plane. And in this case, the high function has singularity of type A2. So these are the generic uh, singularities that we have uh, for uh, the high function. So with this, I finished the first approach in the study of the flat geometry. The second one, as how also promised, he made a lot of promises. Uh, we, we, were, oh, we were able to obtain um, a normal generic uh, form for any surface 
uh, which, uh, whose parameterization is a equivalent to this one. And we made this just using smooth change of coordinates in the source and isometries in the target. And now, once again, we will look to the high function, but now using the previous normal, generic normal form we got. Uh, once again, V will be a vector in the unit sphere. And now, pi V will be the orthogonal hyperplane to the vector V. And we already knew, but once again, the high function will be singular if and only if this uh, V1 is equals to zero, which is equivalent to the, uh, to the hyperplane pi V containing uh, the, the tangent direction of the surface. Now, we will stu we'll, uh, study different possibilities for the vector V in order to get different uh, positions for pi V, the tangent cone, and the curvature plane. And this and these possibilities will give us conditions over the coefficients of the generic normal form for each possible singularity of the high function. In the sense, for example, if V is this vector, the hyperplane uh, pi V is transversal to the tangent cone and to the curvature plane. And the high function will have singularity of type A1 if and only if V is an, an essential binormal direction. It means that the, that the hyperplane pi V is not the oscillating hyperplane. Uh, the, the, the conditions for A2 is now V will be an essential binormal direction, which, me, which means that pi V will be an, the oscillating hyperplane. And we have this, also this condition. And for singularity of type A3, we have those conditions using the coefficients of the generic normal form we got. When pi v contains the tangent cone and it's and is transverse to the curvature plane, the vector v is given by this one, and the high function will have singularity of type A1 or Morse. And at last, when delta p contains both the tangent cone and the curvature plane, v will be given by this vector, and the high function will never uh, have singularity of type A1. A2, if and only if the umbilic curvature is non-zero, and A3, if and only if uh, the umbilic curvature is zero. This case didn't appear in our first approach because it's not generic. Well, this is it. Thank you. I hope I didn't bore you to death. And once again, happy birthday, Federico. Yes, as a matter of fact, there is a relation. Uh, uh, how and I, we proved that there is a relation between the ellipse, uh, the curve, uh, ellipse of curvature from regular surfaces in R4 and the curvature parabola of surfaces in R3. So, spoiler alert, there will be a paper as soon as uh, just giving this uh, information. Ah, okay. So it's answer. Just wait and see the paper. Any more comments? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you.